subscribe my channel p sarala hit the bell icon so that you are notified every time i post a new lesson welcome to another class of neural system so in this class we are going to learn about the peripheral neural system so peripheral neural system is formed by cranial nerves and the spinal nerves so in human beings there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves today we learn about the cranial nerves so we all know that mammals contain 12 pairs of uh, cranial nerves among these 12 pairs two pairs of cranial nerves which are cranial number 1 and cranial number 2 so cranial number 1 this is the cranial number 1 olfactory and the second one is a optic so these two arise from the cerebrum of the brain region and the remaining 10 pairs remaining third to 12th pair arise from the brain stem so you have to remember that two pairs arise from the cerebrum region and the remaining 10 pairs arise from the brain stem cranial nerves are the nerves which arise in the brain or end in the brain so this is very important the name indic the name itself indicates that cranial means brain so these are the nerves which arise in the brain or end in the brain depending upon the function uh, cranial nerves are three types sensory motor and mixed all you all know that sensory means so these are the nerves which come from the sense organs like uh, ear eyes nose tongue etc so these are the nerves which come from the sense organs and uh, goes into the brain region so they end in the brain just start in the sense organs and end in the brain region so second some of the cranial nerves exclusively motor means so these are the nerves which arise in the brain region and they goes to the different organs of the body so that's why they are known as motor nerves and some are mixed nerves what is meant by mixed they contain sensory fibers and the motor fibers so they receive fibers from the sense organs and goes to the brain and from brain the fibers goes to the effective organs so those are known as mixed nerves next we we'll learn about the sensory cranial nerves there are three pairs of sensory cranial nerves olfactory nerve which is the first cranial nerve and the optic nerve which is the second cranial nerve and uh, eighth cranial nerve or vestibulo cochlear or auditory or acoustic nerve so these three are the sensory exclusively these are sensory cranial nerves so olfactory nerve so this is the olfactory nerve so olfactory nerves originated it is a sensory nerve so it origins in the olfactory epithelium of the nasal chamber so in the nose region it arises from the olfactory epithelium and extends to the temporal lobe through olfactory bulb so this is the olfactory bulb so it extends to the olfactory bulb to the temporal lobe of the cerebrum so the function of this olfactory nerve is sense of smell so we are able to sense the smells like uh, fragrance uh, or uh, uh, smell of uh, roses uh, or the smell of biryani all these are uh, because of olfactory nerve so second one is the optic nerve so optic nerve means it is originated in the eye region so retina of the eye so it arises from the eye retina of the eye region and uh, passes to the brain region so while passing in the brain region it forms a cross shaped x or cross shaped 
optic chiasma on the floor of the diencephalon so on the floor of the diencephalon the two optic nerves cross each other and form a cross like structure which is known as optic chiasma the function of the optic nerve is mainly vision so the impulses of uh, optic nerve reaches the occipital lobe of the cerebrum and the third sensory cranial nerve is the vestibulocochlear or auditory nerve another name for this is acoustic nerve so it has uh, two branches so this is the this one so this pink one is the vestibulocochlear nerve so this eighth one so it is also a sense exclusively sensory nerve so it arises from the ear region arises from the vestibular apparatus so this is the vestibular apparatus of the inner ear so it contains saculus ventriculus semicircular canals so all these constitute vestibular apparatus so one branch comes from the vestibular apparatus and ends at the junction of pons and medulla oblongata so arises from the vestibular apparatus of the inner ear and ends at the junction of pons and medulla so this is the vestibular nerve so this one so it is the function of this vestibular branch is maintaining the balance or equilibrium of the body so second branch of this nerve is a cochlear branch so this is the cochlear region so from this uh, a branch arises uh, this is known as cochlear branch so it arises from the organ of curti of cochlea and ends in the vestibular nuclear complex of uh, fourth ventricle so fourth ventricle means the medulla region so this region that is a cochlear region from this region arises a branch which is known as a cochlear branch and this is the function of this branch is hearing the eighth cranial nerve which is known as vestibulocochlear the function of this nerve is maintaining the balance and for hearing so this is about the sensory cranial nerves so first one second one and the eighth cranial nerves are the sensory cranial nerves motor cranial nerves so motor cranial nerves these are exclusively motor in function so motor nerves are is in the brain region and goes to the effective organs so the third one oculomotor so in the name itself a motor so this is a motor cranial nerve so it arises from the floor of midbrain and it goes to the muscles of the eyeball so it innervates the inferior oblique superior and inferior medial rectus muscles and the muscles of ciliary and iris so these are the superior rectus medial rectus and the inferior rectus muscles and the so this now oculomotor nerve innervates uh, these muscles of the eyeball so as they innervate these muscles so it helps in the movement of the eyeball in the upward direction and downward direction and the median directions so the eyeball moves up down and the median movement is under the control of oculomotor nerve so it is also controls the constriction of the pupil so this black part is the pupil and the constriction of the pupil is uh, also under the control of oculomotor nerve and the next one is uh, trochlear nerve or the fourth cranial nerve so this cranial nerve also arises from the floor of midbrain and it innervates the superior oblique so this is the superior oblique muscle superior oblique muscles of the eyeball so the 
one of the important uh, feature of trochlear nerve it is the smallest cranial nerve so in the examination question may be come like that we, uh, what is the smallest cranial nerve so trochlear nerve is the smallest cranial nerve yet it has the longest intracranial nerve because it passes more distance in the cranium that's why it is known as a longest intracranial nerve so you have to remember though it is a smallest cranial nerve but it has a longest intracranial transmission okay so the function of this nerve is the movement of the eyeball so the eyeball moves down and inwards the eyeball movement is downwards and inside inwards so that movement is under the control of a trochlear nerve and the sixth nerve abducens nerve so this nerve arises in the pons region of the brain and it in innervates the rectus muscles of the eyeball so these are the inferior rectus muscles of the eyeball and this is useful and also lateral rectus muscles the sixth cranial nerve is known as abducens cranial nerve it arises from the pons of the brain and it innervates the lateral so these are the lateral rectus muscles of the eyeball and the function of this nerve is it moves the eyeball side to side movement so side to side movement is under the control of abducens nerve so you have to remember that third fourth and sixth cranial nerves are useful for the eyeball movement so different types of eyeball movement are under the control of these three motor nerves third fourth and the sixth cranial nerves 3 4 6 you have to remember 3 4 6 so these are the motor cranial nerves uh, which controls the movement of eyeball in different directions next motor nerve is the 11th uh, cranial nerve which is known as spinal accessory nerve or accessory nerve it origins from the medulla region and it uh, innervates the muscles of larynx pharynx neck and the shoulder region so spinal you remember spinal region starting part of the spinal region so it controls the muscles of all these organs so to remember the function of this now you simply remember i don't know what we do i don't know we shrug our shoulders so by that you can simply remember the function of spinal accessory shrug okay next so the last motor cranial nerve is the 12th cranial nerve which is known as hypoglossal glossa means tongue okay so whenever you come across the glossa region so it means tongue so this cranial nerve arises from the medulla region and it innervates the muscles of the tongue region so the it is responsible for the different movements of the tongue the left right up and down movement of the tongue is under the control of hypoglossal cranial nerve the function of hypoglossal cranial nerve is it controls the tongue movement pertaining to speech food manipulation and swallowing so due to the movement of tongue all these functions are performed so these these this is about the motor cranial nerves so there are five motor cranial nerves three motor nerves are exclusively for the eyeball movement okay next uh, we will study the mixed cranial nerves so mixed means uh, they have both sensory fibers and the motor fibers so among mixed cranial nerves trigeminal nerve or the fifth cranial nerve which is the largest and thickest cranial nerve 
trigeminal nerve is the largest and the thickest cranial nerve. It, it arises from the pons of the brain stem and it has three branches. So, this is the trigeminal or fifth cranial nerve, it has uh, three branches. So, this is the this is the ophthalmic branch which is sensory in function and this is the maxillary branch which is a mixed one. It is act both as the sensory and the motor and, and the biggest uh, branch is the mandibular branch. It is also mixed branch. So, the ophthalmic branch. So, this is the ophthalmic region. Ophthalmic you have to remember eye region. So, it innervates lacrimal glands and muscles of the lower jaw. So, muscles of the lower jaw and lacrimal glands, submaxillary and sublingual salivary glands which are present in the mouth region are also innervated by the uh, trigeminal cranial nerve. So, the sensory impulses, it also receives the sensory impulses from the lacrimal glands of and the eyelids, palate and the lips, upper lip, nose, tongue and the cheeks. This cranial nerve is also known as the trifacial cranial nerve. So, trigeminal, another name for trigeminal cranial nerve is the trifacial cranial nerve. So, as it uh, supplies branch to the lacrimal glands. So, the purpose of lacrimal glands is uh, yeah, to produce tears. So, that is uh, when tears come, when we, when the emotions like uh, happiness, excessive happiness or sorrow, we shed tears. So, it is under the control of trigeminal cranial nerve. Okay. So, next. Next mixed nerves, uh, mixed cranial nerves are the facial nerves. So, facial nerve is the seventh cranial nerve. So, in the name itself a facial. So, the function of this nerve is the movement of the facial muscles. So, it is a mixed means it has two fibers, motor fibers and the sensory fibers. Sensory fibers arises from the taste buds and the two thirds of the tongue and goes to the pons region through Gesserian ganglion and the motor fibers arise from the pons region and comes to the facial palate, hyoid, sublingual and submaxillary salivary glands. The function of this nerve is facial movements like movements during crying or laughing etc. And another function of the facial nerve is it is useful to taste only two thirds of the tongue is innervated by the facial nerve and this part anterior two thirds of the tongue is useful for tasting. Next, uh, next mixed nerve is uh, glossopharyngeal, glossom means tongue. Okay? So, this is the ninth cranial nerve and the sensory fibers of this nerve, it is a mixed nerve. So, sensory fibers of this now arise from the posterior one third of the tongue region and the pharynx and they go to the medulla region and motor fibers arise from the medulla region and they ends in the muscles of the pharynx, parotid and the uh, sublingual and submaxillary salivary glands. So, the function of this cranial nerve is tasting at uh, one posterior one third of the tongue region and also for the jaw movements it is useful. And the last mixed nerve is the vagus nerve which is known as the 10th cranial nerve. So, this is the longest cranial nerve. So, because it travels all through the diaphragm stomach to the intestinal region. So, it also has a two fibers, sensory fibers and motor fibers. Sensory fibers arise from the visceral organs of the abdomen and goes to the medulla. Visceral organs like stomach, esophagus, stomach, lungs, heart and goes to the medulla region and motor fibers arise from the medulla and go to 
these uh, visceral organs esophagus lungs heart stomach and the intestine region so hope you will understand the topic we will meet in the next lesson